Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, about mid-October, my youngest daughter, Jenna and Dane, got married here in the backyard. And after the wedding was over, the following day, we started cleaning up everything. And there was these 12 orchids left over in these pots, and they were beautiful, and I just couldn't throw them away. So we hung on to them, left them out on the patio table, and they've been there for almost four months now, sitting in the same spot on our patio table. Well, my wife and I aren't really much for gardening, but she did a little research and she's been nurturing these things and they look just as beautiful today as they did back when the wedding was, mid-October. But it's time to get them off our patio table, so it's time for me to make a rack or a stand for these things. So that's what we're doing in today's video. Let's get started. So the first thing I did is go to my uh, overhead metal rack right here and I, I really couldn't decide whether to use one inch or inch and a half. I happen to have the same amount of each which is about 60 feet so I decided to go with a one inch. I think that that was the more appropriate size for this particular project. And uh, again, I've got no plans for this. This is just uh, in my head. I, I've got some basic dimensions for the area that it's going to go in. And so I start by just cutting all the pieces up. Now these are just the primary pieces. Uh, I'm just getting started right here. Clamping things together with fireball square and getting the initial pieces uh, put together. But before I get started right here, I'm using these flints wipe and clear lens wipes. I use these for my glasses, my, my hood. Uh, they work really good. They're really inexpensive. I, I got them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description there so you can check that out. I, I think a, a box of 100 or 200 or something like that's only like $6 or something. They're pretty cool, disposable. You can see I'm just uh, you know going around getting the first primary pieces uh, welded together. You know, I like to get everything welded together and then I like to weld them all the way through both sides and I like to grind those welds down so I have a complete flat surface to work with. You know, uh, if you left the welds on and you tried to fabricate, uh, you know, you've got the bubble part of the crown part of the weld that would be sticking up and it just causes problems I found. So I like everything nice and flat. I like to grind things as, as I go along right here, at least as much as I can. And you can see that uh, I'm, I'm using the fixture clamps for the first time. I'm trying to learn how all of this works. The table's new to me. And uh, the first thing I did was just put a, uh, uh, the fireball square right there, hung it over the edge, and you can see that I was able to clamp things and uh, get, you know, get these uh, little pieces fabricated. Uh, that worked out really good. Uh, and like I said, I'm just learning how to use this table. There's all kinds of different ways and different clamping methods and different clamps to use. Uh, so far, I'm really liking it. It's pretty cool. There's just a few pieces here. You know, I've got these L pieces and I've got these uh, little uh, L pieces that are going to be welded to these pieces and uh, those pieces, that pieces, just a whole bunch of everything that I want to get as much as I can uh, fabricated. So when I do the assembly here, it's just that much easier. You know, again, just, uh, you know, fireball square, fixture clamp, clamps. I love it. Everything's nice and flat, nice and square. All right, so here's the first part of the assembly. Now I'm, I'm getting a chance to use uh, uh, some of these uh, Fablock squares that, uh, that came with the table. Now, not just one. I've used every single Fablock square, different size, and fixture clamp that I could possibly use. I'm just learning, like I said, how all this stuff works. And, and i got to say, it, it is just such a pleasure to use all this stuff. And you can see I've got them all there. I got the big ones on the far end down there. I got the two uh, fatter ones there and the smaller ones. I got all the fixture clamps holding everything in place and everything is perfectly square. And it just allowed me to get everything tacked in and just weld it out as much as I could get possibly welded out before um, I start taking everything down. And, and I'm telling you, it's just uh, worked out really good. Something that uh, I'm not quite used to. It just speeds up fabrication. Uh, tremendously all right I got it all done as well out as much as I could anyway and it's just a matter of taking off all the clamps and fixture clamps and squares and then we get this thing stood up and there it is so I got to finish out the rest of the welding now um, you know I, I I like to weld everything completely all the way around and you don't really have to or I mean you know, this isn't taking, structurally, this isn't taking a big load. This is a light load. But uh, if, if you leave any open gaps, it just allows water and moisture to get trapped inside there and just cause rust. 
uh, deterioration a lot faster. If you weld all the way around, that's the way I like to do it anyway. I know it takes a little bit longer, but uh, you know what? The overall product is, is much better. Now, I had to put these, uh, these little dividers in between. And again, I couldn't decide whether to put one or two, but uh, this is some 14-gauge sheet metal I'm going to be using here. Same stuff I used on the bottom of the welding table and the Ultimate Welding Cart. I had some stuff left over. You'll see that in just a minute. So I thought this would fit uh, two, two dividers on each shelf, uh, uh, plus the bottom shelf would be enough to support um you know the sheet metal here again you know there's tons of welds here you know you don't realize it but there's probably a couple of hundred welds right here all the way around all these little tiny pieces it takes a long time to get it all done but it's welding and it's a project and it's fun so i'm just going to grab the walter grinder right here and uh, you can see that the uh the grinder rack right there and the outlet the convenience of it all on this table i've only had this table for a, a couple weeks and it's already uh, serving its purpose perfectly. So I'm just going to grind off some of this, uh, not all the wells, but uh, flatten out the areas where uh, the sheet metal is going to be going so everything sits there nice and flat. And maybe some of the outside corner joints there uh, just to make it look better after paint. Uh, just cleaning things up a little bit. You know, you can't get all the wells, but uh, you know, just the ones that are going to be exposed that are going to be seen, that uh, makes a really big difference. Well, there it is. You can see it rocking a little bit there. Now, I do have a solution for that, and uh, we'll get to that here in a little bit. I'm just finishing up the last of the grinding right here. And you can see, here's that sheet metal. I saved a couple pieces that was left over from the welding cart video. Now, this stuff is pretty expensive, and uh, so I hung on to it. And just look at these two pieces are almost perfect for this. doesn't always work that way, but uh, in this case, I'm glad it did. This one didn't require too much, just a little bit of trimming on the corners to allow it to get in. Uh, around the uh, square tubing there and a little bit off the top piece right there works pretty good however it wasn't enough to finish the project but i did have some left over from the welding table uh bottom here and uh, i just went and just sliced off a section that's going to leave me about a four foot by four foot piece and you can bet i'm going to hang on to that because i'll use it somewhere down the road and there it is uh just like that all pieces are are set in there so I thought the best way to, to attach it is just some little spot welds about every six or eight inches apart right here. You know, I just filled the I just filled them in on the inside of the little quarter inch hole diameter. And it's just a little flat little bubble. It worked out really good. You know, just using these clamps to hold everything nice and tight. It's pretty important. Just clamp everything down. I, I've learned the hard way. If you don't do this, you have problems. But uh, this works out pretty good right here. You can't ever have enough clamps. Now this is the uh, leg adjustment thing that I was talking about. Uh, this is just an idea. This is a half inch nut and I wanted to uh, be able to put it inside the square tube. It didn't quite fit. So I had to do a little bit of grinding, uh, knock a couple of edges off in order for them to fit in there. A little hot. I was trying to get it done without doing it, but uh, I had to resort to the pliers, the channel locks. And this is a half inch bolt right here and you can see I just uh, put them in there and then put some tape on the threads so that when I was welding these things in place that I wouldn't get any spatter on the threads. And I just put a couple little tacks in each corner that wasn't a lot to work with and then a little bit of filler material on the sides right there and then took the tape off and there's the adjustable legs right there. Like I said, not a lot to work with but uh, not doesn't require too much. And then I just re repeated that with uh, the remaining three that I had left. And uh, that worked out pretty good. I've never done anything like that, but it was a good little, uh, good little adjustment there. The surface that this is going to be sitting on is really uneven, so this is going to work out pretty good. All right, there it is complete. You know, this was a great little project for me. It worked out really good. I got a coat of paint on it. and got the orchids in its place. And... Uh, uh, I really enjoyed the build. It was a big improvement. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Check out my website at jimbosgarage.com. Thanks for watching. See you next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.